In this series of videos, we're going to delve into secrets management using SOPS, and more specifically, the SOPS Next implementation of it for Nix OS. We'll talk about what SOPS is using some practical examples, how SOPS fits into the Nix config anatomy that I described in the previous two videos, and we'll cover how SOPS secrets can be programmatically accessed when the configuration is built. Along the way, we'll talk about some of the hurdles that you might encounter, and lastly, how you can store your secrets in a secondary private repository for an added layer of security, if you choose. A huge thank you to everyone who's subscribed, commented, or left me feedback on YouTube or elsewhere. I'm thrilled to know that what I'm doing is providing value to you, and I'm excited to see where this can go. The high-level basics of SOPS is that you have an encrypted file that contains your secrets in a structured format such as YAML or JSON, and decrypting the contents requires a cryptographic key. Nothing overly mind-blowing there. Where it gets interesting is that multiple keys can be used on the same file, and if you need to, you can even require multiple keys to be used simultaneously. Kind of like when you want to enter your high-security vault and ogle your prototype Terminator appendages. For our purposes, what we end up with is a secret file that can be used in the Nix config regardless of which host configuration is being built, with the added benefit that if one of those hosts is eliminated or significantly changed, the related access key can be disassociated with the secrets file without impacting access for all of the other hosts. So let's take a look at an example secrets file that contains an SMTP password, a user password, and an SSH private key. The file will be encrypted using one or more access keys as defined in a SOPS configuration file. I'm not going to cover the scenario where multiple simultaneous keys are required to encrypt and decrypt because I suspect that it's beyond the needs of most people watching this. Let me know if that's something you'd like me to cover though and I can put something together as a supplement. Once decrypted, the structure of the secrets file can be used to extract specific data. The SMTP password can be referenced by the notification service to authenticate with the mail server, the user password can be used when that user is created on the system, and the user's personal SSH private key can be saved to its typical location in the user's home at the .ssh directory. And this can happen on all of the hosts that are able to decrypt those secrets. There are plenty of different types of secrets that we might want to use this way, and while you can really store just about anything, we'll focus on any privileged information that can be used by the Nix config to set up our hosts with as little manual interaction required and I'll use these three examples for the remainder of the series. For now, we've got an adequate understanding of SOPS itself. We're going to enable SOPS in the Nix config using SOPS Nix, which is a Nix OS specific distribution of SOPS. You might recall from the previous videos that SOPS Nix is a flake-based repo that was added as an input to the flake.nix file. Also, I've updated the diagram to reflect my current state as of this recording. The previous diagram included some differences that I had in there at the time for example purposes. The relevant code in the flake.nix is as follows, and like the other inputs, they become accessible using the inputs argument elsewhere in the config. With SOPs available to the config, we'll need at least one access key to encrypt and decrypt our secrets. We'll be talking about a lot of different keys here, so let's get some context. To access the SOPS encrypted secrets, we'll use cryptographic keys, and each key consists of a key pair. The key pair includes a public key used to encrypt the secrets file, and a private key used to decrypt the secrets file. For the rest of the video, I'll refer to a single key pair as an access key when it is related to accessing SOPS secrets. And where appropriate, I'll be explicit about whether I'm referring to the public access key or the private access key. All of the access key images will have a circular shaped bow. Other keys that will be in the mix are SSH keys. These are also key pairs, but won't directly be used to access the SOPS file. To distinguish them further, I've used a hexagon shaped bow. A couple of others will be briefly mentioned, but they'll be differently shaped as well. So just bear in mind that not all keys are the same, and I'll try to be as clear as possible. So how do you get an access key? There are a few different ways to generate them for SOPS Nix. Firstly, access keys can either be in PGP or age format. Secondly, regardless of what format they are, the access keys can be an existing key that was generated for other purposes, which I don't really recommend, a standalone key that is generated exclusively for use with your SOP secrets, or a key that was derived from an existing SSH key. This is particularly useful for access keys specific to a host, because the host may already have an SSH host key pair that can be used to simplify our process. 
We'll be creating keys using the age format instead of PGP. The main reason is that we'll eventually be deriving our host specific access keys from their SSH host keys. And doing so with PGP only supports RSA. RSA is inferior encryption to ED25519, so that's reason enough to avoid PGP. I also happen to think that PGP is hot garbage, so avoid it wherever possible. To start, we'll create a standalone age-based access key that can be used for development purposes regardless of what host we're using. In other words, this allows us to access our secrets file from any host we choose regardless of whether the host has its own access key. This will also provide us an escape hatch to access the secrets if we're on a system where the host access key somehow changes or fails for whatever reason. Generating our standalone access key is simple using the age-keygen tool as follows. First, create a location to store the key. We'll use the path that SOPS expects by default. So we'll make a few directories in the user's home under .config slash SOP slash age, and then we'll run the age-keygen tool with an output to the path we created and the keys.txt file. If you don't already have the age-keygen tool installed, you can run the command inside a Nix shell wrapper as follows. Once complete, the public access key will be printed to the terminal. It might go without saying, but the keys.txt file contains your private access key info and it shouldn't be shared. Throughout these videos, I'll be generating and using throwaway keys and passwords rather than abstractions like my private key or some secret so that you'll know exactly what to expect when looking at your own for the first time. Let's take a look at the one I just created. You should copy your private access key info to a secured password database for backup. You can also note that the public key is printed to the screen when you run the tool. We'll need to enter it in a file shortly. However, if it wasn't printed to the screen for some reason, you can always reprint it as needed using the following command. Of course, the public key info is also included in the keys.txt file, but ideally, you'll never have to open that file again manually after you've backed up the private key. Now, we'll add the public key to a file called .sops.yaml, which is the config file used by SOPS to know which access keys should be used to encrypt the secrets file and therefore, which related private access keys can be used to decrypt it later on. For now, we'll create that file at the root of the Nix config. The first element of the file will define the public access key data. We have a list of access keys, and the only member of this list for now is a single user. We'll append the personal public access key we just generated to the user value. The next element is a list of the creation rules that are used for encrypting and decrypting the secrets file. We specify the path to our secrets file, which is relative to the location of the .sops.yaml file we're working in. For now, we'll also keep this in the root of the Nix config. Next, we'll define the key groups that are valid for the file. So we'll see that there is a list of age keys and the list contains a single entry. Notice that in the keys element, we prepended the username with an ampersand. In YAML, this signifies an anchor, which can later be referenced by an asterisk, which we use in the key groups list. When SOPS is handling the secrets file, it will see that TA is a valid key and refer to the keys element to find out the related public key. Another note about YAML is that indentation is used to denote structure, so keeping the correct indentation is required and very important. This will become more important as we add to this file and when creating and editing the secrets file down the road. As mentioned, we're also going to add an access key for the target host, so we'll save and close this file for now and come back to it shortly. Now, we'll assume that the host we're going to provide access to happens to be the same machine we're working on. We'll also assume that the current machine was already set up to allow remote connections over SSH using ED25519 encryption. One way to verify this is by listing the contents of your slash Etsy slash SSH directory. Here we can see that among other things, there is an SSH key pair made up of a private key, SSH underscore host underscore ED25519 underscore key, and the public key has the same name except that it's appended with the .pub extension. Since this key pair is already associated with the specific host, we can derive our age access key for SOPS from this key pair. For now, we'll only need the public SSH key and we'll tell SOPS to use the private SSH key automatically later on. To convert the public SSH key to a public age access key, we'll use the Nix shell to pull in the SSH to age tool, and then we'll cat the contents of the public key and pipe it to the tool. Now we'll go back to our .sops.yaml file and enter the new information. First, we'll organize the keys element to be a list of users and hosts, 
we'll add our public access key for that host, and then we'll add the host to the key group's age list. Now that we have the secrets config file, we can finally create our secrets file. To do so, we'll use SOPS itself. SOPS will create the file and open it using whatever we have set as our default editor. So here we have our blank secrets file, and we'll start to populate it using the examples that were shown in the intro. First up, we have the password for authenticating an SMTP client with the server for notifications. Next, we'll add the password for our user. Now, this has to be in a hashed format, and to get a hash, you can use the make password tool with the dash s option for standard input. Then, copy the hash and add it to your secrets. Lastly, we'll add the user's personal SSH private key for remotely accessing other hosts. This will be located in the user's .ssh directory. For the demo here, I'll generate a throwaway SSH key using SSH keygen and follow the prompts. But I won't bother with a passphrase because this is a demo. Now we'll cat our personal private SSH key info, copy it, and add it to the secrets file. So we've added all the secrets to the file. If you want, you can also structure the file with hierarchies such as this, but sometimes it will require subtle quirks with how you access the secrets in the rest of the config. That's not a discouragement, but just be aware that you might have to do some troubleshooting and exploration of other examples online, depending on how you organize your secrets. One quick note with YAML, the pipe signifies that it's going to be a section of strings. And you have to make sure that all of the subsequent lines in the string are indented at the same level of indentation. When we save and exit the file, SOPS will automatically encrypt it using the public access keys we defined in the .sops.yaml file. If we try to edit the file without using SOPS, we'll see it in an encrypted format as follows. The structural elements are visible, but all the values are encrypted. You can also see here from lines 4 to 32 that the secrets file in its encrypted format includes a bunch of additional data that is used by SOPS. To edit the file properly, we'll just run the same command as last time, sops secrets.yaml, or with the next shell wrapper if need be. Sops will decrypt it for us and open it up in whatever our default editor is. That's it for part one of the video series. In the next part, we'll look at how to programmatically access our newly created secrets for use throughout the config.